Welcome to the Use the Web Setup Wizard video tutorial. During this video, I will describe when to use the Web Setup Wizard and the steps to take before using it. I'll also explain how to use the Web Setup Wizard to create your initial Firebox configuration and will show you how to resolve some common setup issues. When you set up a new Firebox, you use the Web Setup Wizard to configure basic network and security settings. You can also use the Web Setup Wizard to create a new configuration or restore a saved configuration. You might have to do this, for example, if you forgot the administrator password or just want to start over. In this video, I will focus on how to use the Web Setup Wizard to create a new basic configuration. The Quick Start Guide that came with your device also summarizes these steps. I want to point out that if your device supports Rapid Deploy Quick Start, you can eliminate the need for the Web Setup Wizard because Rapid Deploy Quick Start enables your Firebox to automatically download and use a configuration file that was created by WatchGuard. For more information about Rapid Deploy Quick Start, see the Introduction to Rapid Deploy video tutorial. I'll include a link to that video at the end of this one. Before you use the Web Setup Wizard, there are a few things you should do. After you activate your Firebox, you'll need to gather some basic network information from your ISP, find out DNS and Win server information, and define your trusted network IP addresses. I'll go into each of these items in more detail next. To get started, you should log into the WatchGuard Support Center and activate your Firebox. Then, download its feature key to unlock all of its functionality. If you are unsure how to activate your device, I recommend that you watch the Activate a Firebox or XTM device video tutorial. I'll include a link to that video at the end of this one. After you activate your Firebox, it's time to gather some basic information about your network. If your Firebox is behind a router that connects to an Internet Service Provider, or ISP, the first thing you need to know is how your Firebox will be assigned its external, or public, IP address. If you don't already know this information, you can ask your ISP. Your ISP could assign a static IP address, which is a permanent IP address that doesn't change. Or, your ISP might use DHCP or PPPoE to dynamically assign IP addresses. Here's a list of some more questions you'll want to ask your ISP. You'll need to know the answers in order to complete the Web Setup Wizard. In addition, you'll need to find out how your device gets DNS and WINS information. A DNS server converts a web address or domain name to an IP address. You could have your own DNS server, or you could use a DNS server hosted by your ISP. You'll also need a DNS server IP address if your external interface will use a static IP address, or if you want your Firebox to be a DHCP server for the computers on your network. If you're going to use a dynamic IP address on the external interface of your Firebox, you don't need to enter a DNS server address in the wizard. If you use a Win server, it will always be installed on a computer on your network. You may use a Win server if you use an older version of Microsoft Windows. If you don't know what Wins is, you likely don't need to include this information in the wizard. In the wizard, you'll need to define an IP address for the trusted interface of your Firebox. To know what IP address to use, you need to think about your private network because the trusted IP address you use must be in the same network range as the rest of your private network. If you're replacing an existing device, you may want to use the same IP address as the old device used. If you want, you can also enable the DHCP server on your Firebox so it can automatically assign IP addresses to the computers that connect to it. Many of our customers find that having their Firebox provide DHCP addresses for trusted computers is a good approach. Now that you have all your network information, you are ready to connect your computer to the Firebox and start the Web Setup Wizard. If this is a new device, you can just power it on and the device will be ready for you to start the wizard. If this is not a new device, you must reset it to its factory default state first. Next. Use a network cable to connect your computer to Interface 1 on the Firebox. The factory default IP address for Interface 1 is 10.0.1.1, so your computer also needs to have an IP address on that network in order to connect. 
If your computer is set up to get an IP address from DHCP, the Firebox will automatically assign your computer an IP address when you connect to Interface 1. Otherwise, you must manually configure your computer to use an IP address on the same subnet. After you connect your computer to Interface 1, make sure your computer gets an address on the 10.0.1.0-24 network. Connect Interface 0 to a router or network that has internet access. When you have everything connected, it should look like this. To start the Web Setup Wizard, open a web browser on your computer and then type https colon slash slash 10.0.1.1 colon 8080 in the address bar. You might see a certificate warning in your browser like I have here if your Firebox uses a self-signed certificate. The warning will look different based on which browser you use. It's okay to go ahead and ignore this warning. When you see the Fireware Web UI login page, log in as an administrative user. To do this, Type the username admin here and the default passphrase, which is read-write, here. Don't worry, you'll change to a more secure passphrase later in the setup process. The wizard has two configuration options. By default, the wizard creates a new device configuration, but you can also use the wizard to restore a saved backup image. Because I want to create a new configuration, I'll just click Next. When you see this page, make sure you review and accept the license agreement. The next step that appears depends upon the version of Fireware OS installed on your Firebox. Don't worry if your wizard looks a little different than what you see here. The steps are pretty much the same in all versions of the Web Setup Wizard. They might appear in a different order, however. In this video, we will go through the steps in the order they are presented in the version 11.10.1 Web Setup Wizard. This is where you'll configure how your Firebox gets an external IP address. You can select from DHCP, PPPoE, or Static. The option you choose will depend on what type of IP address you get from your ISP, which is why collecting network information before starting the Web Setup Wizard is such a good idea. For this demonstration, I'll select DHCP. After you select the IP address type, it's time to fill in the more detailed information about your IP address. Depending on what type of IP address you use, the wizard requests different information. Adding information about the DNS and WIN servers for your network is optional, but we recommend you do it now if you have the information. Remember, if you give your external interface a dynamic IP address, you can skip this step. Your Firebox will get this information automatically. Because I have a dynamic IP address, I'll leave these fields blank. This is where you set up the IP address for your trusted interface, which is Interface 1. Interface 1 is connected to your private network. By default, the IP address is set to 10.0.1.1 which is the same address used to connect to the Web Setup Wizard. You can change this IP address to any private IP address you want to use. If you also want a DHCP server on this interface, select this checkbox to have the Firebox automatically assign an IP address to any device that connects to the trusted network. Use these fields to define the address range you want the Firebox to use to assign IP addresses. These addresses must be on the same network as the trusted interface IP address, but cannot overlap it. In the last few steps of the wizard, you're going to define some basic settings to help you manage your Firebox. Use this page to create passphrases. There are two management user accounts, Admin and Status. Make sure to select strong passphrases that are at least 8 characters long. If you want to manage your Firebox from home or on the road, you can enable Remote Management. This opens the WatchGuard management port to a computer outside your network. We recommend that you don't enable Remote Management if you don't need to because there are more secure ways to accomplish this. You can always configure it later if you need it. 
You can use this page to modify the information that describes your firebox, including its name, location, and the person or department responsible for the firebox. Only the device name field is required, and you can use this default name, which is the model number, or you can type a name that will help you identify your firebox. For this demonstration, I'll leave the default name. My firebox T10 is at a branch office, so I'll type that here. And I want people to contact the IT department if they have any questions about the firebox. You also need to select the time zone that the firebox will reside in. This information is important to make sure the correct time appears in log files and reports. My firebox is in the Pacific time zone, so I'll use this drop down menu to change the setting. You can use one of three methods to apply a feature key to your Firebox. If the Firebox already has a feature key, or if the device was previously activated, the wizard automatically retrieves the feature key from the WatchGuard website and applies it to your Firebox. If your Firebox has not yet been activated, you can use the Online Activation option within the wizard to activate your Firebox and then automatically retrieve and download the feature key. Finally, if you have a Firebox that was previously activated, you can manually paste the feature key text into the wizard when prompted to do so. If you don't have an internet connection when you run the Web Setup Wizard, you can always choose to skip activation entirely and apply the feature key later. As you can see here, because I have internet access and my device, the wizard was able to successfully retrieve and apply the feature key for my Firebox. All I need to do now is click Next to apply the settings I just configured. That's it! The setup is complete. Now that the basic configuration is complete, it's a good idea to confirm that the connections are working as expected. To see the status of your interfaces, log in to the Web UI and then select Dashboard Interfaces. Select the Detail tab so you can see whether the link status for the external interface is up. If it's not, your network doesn't have internet access. One common way to resolve this issue is to restart your internet router and then restart the Firebox. You can also use your browser to test internet connectivity through the Firebox. Try browsing to WatchGuard.com. If you test your connection and it doesn't work, you may need to take a few more steps to update the IP address and DNS information on your computer. If you're comfortable with the Windows command line, you can use the ipconfig release and ipconfig renew commands to quickly force your computer to request a new IP address. Or, you can just reboot your computer to force it to get a new IP address. If your computer uses a static IP address, or you did not enable DHCP for the trusted network, you might need to manually change your computer's IP address to be on the same subnet as the trusted interface. You can do this from the Windows Control Panel. If you have followed all these steps so far but still can't browse to the Internet, it could be a problem with the device feature key. If you did not install the feature key in the wizard, you must do it now. If the Firebox doesn't have a feature key, it will only allow one user to connect to the Internet at a time. If there are multiple computers on your trusted network, there is no guarantee that your computer will be the one to get Internet access. To resolve this problem, connect your computer directly to the trusted interface and reboot the Firebox. This will make sure that your computer gets the first connection. Then, you can install the feature key and verify internet access from your computer. Once you know that's working, you can connect your internal network to the trusted interface. Now that your Firebox is up and running, it's important to understand the basic firewall settings that are enforced out of the box. By default, it blocks all inbound traffic and allows all outbound TCP, UDP, and ping traffic. You can use the Fireware Web UI or WatchGuard System Manager to customize your configuration. If this is a new device, it's a good idea to upgrade to the latest version of Fireware OS. You can check for updates at the WatchGuard Support Center. If your Firebox uses Fireware version 11.10.1 or higher, you can see and download available OS updates right from the Fireware web UI by selecting System, Upgrade OS. The top of this page shows latest release if no updates are available. If an update is available, you can select it 
and download it to your device from here. For more information about the Web Setup Wizard, see the WatchGuard website.